So Usher scoured the known world, looking for ancient historical sources to bridge the gap. Oh, it's extremely difficult. The Babylonians date or start their year in spring. The Jewish chronology starts in autumn, and the Greeks use Olympiads. So he has to bring all those different types of sources together and link them up somehow to, them, to each other and then to his biblical sources. For 20 years, Usher struggled to reconcile the historical records from over 10,000 volumes in his vast library. Finally, in 1650, he determined a date for the beginning of time with stunning precision. In the very first paragraph, Usher dates the creation of the world to exactly the evening before the 23rd of October, 4004 BC. James Usher had established the very moment of God's creation. Our place was at the center of the universe, the earth created for our purpose. Humanity, the earth, and time itself were 6,000 years old. Compared to our lifetimes, 6,000 years is an incredible amount of time. But around 100 years later, that time scale was about to be dwarfed. For all of Usher's library full of books, the earth itself was beginning to present quite a different story. And the first man to realize it was a problem was a Scottish farmer by the name of James Hutton. Here he is. James Hutton spent most of his life marveling at natural processes, mainly on his own farm. And his investigations would lead to an entirely new idea of time. I'm about to look for the clues that led Hutton to rethink the age of the earth and overturn Usher's 6,000 year history. Geologist Dave Thayer is going to be my guide. Well, I think it's ironic that people used to wonder how old is the Earth, but the answer was underneath their feet in the rocks <laughs> all the time. Yes. They were walking on the answer. Yes, and they just didn't have the knowledge of uh, finding out how to uh, open that book and read the, <laughs> read the answer. So Dave, uh, what are we going to see on this journey now? We're going to gaze into an abyss of time. Mm -hmm. Many people come to the place we're approaching and they don't really understand what they're looking at. James Hutton's insights came from Scotland. But Dave's brought me to a place where the same features have been carved out on a much larger scale. Grand Canyon in Arizona. 270 miles of Colorado River flow across two states, carving out a chasm one mile deep. It's created a landscape on an epic scale. Let's have a seat here. And now, Dave, the Colorado River is a small little thing. How can the Colorado River gouge out such a huge canyon? The river is digging the canyon deeper at the rate of one foot every thousand years. Mm -hmm. And in that time, it's just all this rubble is eroding down into it from the rain. I see. You can imagine how long that's taking because it's all changing to sand as it goes. Wow. And how much rock has been carved out? Well, there's... 800 cubic miles of missing <laughs> rock in the it's Grand Canyon. Rock. A mile below us, the river continues to cut its path through the rock, carrying it away in its silty waters. So we're talking about the power of water, right? I mean, water, water carved this cathedral out of nothing. Yep, yep. And how long has this erosion been taking place? Well, at least five and a half million years is, is what right? they say. <laughs> Following similar clues, 
Hutton realized that Usher's 6,000-year age for Earth had to be wrong. Unimaginable eons of time were needed for water to carve out valleys. And Hutton noticed something else. The layers of rock revealed by erosion showed a still greater scale of time. Now, Dave, when I look at a rock, <laughs> it's boring. A rock is a rock is a rock. But you're telling me that each rock has a story, right? Well, that's true, Mitchell. Um, uh, you can see all the different colors of the layers in the canyon. Mm -hmm. And each one has a different thing to tell. Amazingly, long, long before the rock was eroded away, its layers had to have been formed. Oh, here's a nice place to see the strata. The I see, the yeah, right here. Yeah, this red layer right here would be a siltstone that formed at the edge of an ocean. And you know, it took probably a thousand years to form one inch of it. A thousand years? Yeah. Oh my God. So you're telling me <laughs> that incredible. all of human recorded history, going back to the Babylonians and the yeah. Egyptians, would be just that much. Just a few inches. Isn't that staggering? Yeah. yeah. So this is like uh, like a time machine, basically, right? Uh, a thousand years per inch on average. On average, uh, uh, yeah. If you, if you just took the whole length of just the sedimentary rocks in the canyon that have been deposited here. Uh -huh. uh, Floods and rivers and streams and the ocean coming in. Yeah. Staggers the imagination. It right? does, indeed. As you walk down this trail, by the way, I wanted to tell you that, um, that every step you take, you go about 20,000 years into the past. <laughs> Is that and, right? Yeah. 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 And we've taken uh, quite a few steps quite already, few steps. and there are a lot more steps right. making it all the way down to the river. <laughs> I see. Yeah. In fact, just six inches of the Grand Canyon's rock face is equivalent to Usher's time scale for the whole of Earth's existence. The Earth had begun to reveal the true immensity of time. A scale of time that was inconceivable. An unending abyss. For me, Hutton wrote a great passage which summarizes the experience of the Grand Canyon. And that is, the result, therefore, of our present inquiry is that we find no vestige of a beginning, no prospect for an end. The great vastness of Earth time had been revealed, and a scientific quest had begun. If the Earth wasn't 6,000 years old, then just how old was it? It's a question that has only finally been answered in the last few decades. Sam Bowering is a specialist in dating rocks from all over the world. Back in the 1980s, he collected a sample from Canada, which lay forgotten in his office. It held an amazing secret. Other than noting its presence and thinking it was pretty interesting, I didn't actually begin to work on the rocks for another four years. When Sam got round to study the rock, he wanted to discover its age, so he extracted a mineral called zircon. Present in nearly every rock on Earth, it's a treasure to anyone interested in time. The mineral zircon, when it forms in a rock, incorporates uranium into its crystal structure. So it's like a little time capsule, because over time, the uranium decays to lead. This decay from one element to another is like a ticking clock. It happens at a slow, universal rate. Measure the proportion of uranium to lead in the zircon, and you know the age of the rock it came from. Like thousands of other samples, the Canadian rock appeared unremarkable. But when the results emerged, Sam realized the rock's true significance. I remember very clearly seeing the numbers come off the mass spectrometer on the screen. And that 
was the first time we knew that we had a very old rock. The numbers indicated the longest time span he'd ever seen. In fact, Sam had discovered the oldest fragment of Earth ever found. 